Good morning, folks. We begin looking at that eruption that was just in progress for yesterday's news, followed by a filament snap just to the north of it. The event from yesterday morning appears to have done more surface disruption behind the active region than it did particle ejection. Whatever is leaving the star from this event will be utterly minor. The filament that snapped to the north a few hours later has much of the same story, definitively a CME but likely too small to notice. That canyon of fire beneath the Hyder flare is a solar tsunami spreading as the particles repopulate the fields atop the eruption zone. Top story is an enduring geomagnetic storm the last few hours at Earth. Yesterday we said to watch for the corona hole speed ramp after the density spike and boy it's jumping along with the plasma temperature. The electrons are getting absolutely pounded by the speedy stream of protons. Earth system gained a lot of energy and went into fluctuation leading to destabilization and finally storm conditions. Something to monitor the rest of the day. Despite the small eruptions we saw to start, the solar flaring is leveling out. See flares only. And while the departing sunspot group is growing fast, the earth-facing sunspots have gone into decay. A few more umbras down here, but all small and separated. The trailing group retains some umbral size, but it too is becoming organized in magnetic separation. Earth wasn't without high energy flux, however. Gamma ray signatures came in early this morning. It's the first one in days. It came from the southern skies. You'll remember the earthquake watch off this coronal hole. Had Pakistan rumble and a seven-pointer strike Indonesia. It is now beginning to turn away. Most interesting quakes of the last day were in the Caribbean where four magnitude is relevant and we had two of them. If you watch top left, you will see another dark patch incoming now. The next quake watch along with the coronal hole isn't far away. This opening is of positive polarity and it appears that there is little to no coronal field blocking here on Gong. Discussion point for today. This year's southern noctilucent clouds had a mid-season drop-off anomaly. This would have been mid to late January. Anyone care to favor us with a hypothesis? This can be found at spaceweather.com. Let's also note the increasing Great Lakes ice. Now a brief warm-up will knock this back for the next day or two, but we are so close to hitting 90% for the second year in a row, which has never happened before as long as we've been watching. Let's notice a low way north in Canada so that when we come back down and see the Gulf moisture coming on shore to meet a convergence in the southern states, we understand why the rest of the air is shifting north up into Canada. That's why there's a brief warm-up coming for the Great Lakes. Now notice the purple moisture zones at the Gulf Convergence and coming in from the southwest. The eastern moisture will shoot north towards New England immediately. One storm in progress in the east, another getting started by drenching Arizona. Eyes open. In Europe, the North Atlantic Low is by far and away the strongest system on the northern hemisphere of Earth. It's not even close. The convergence shifts south a bit. Check the precipitable water. The top watches for the region tonight will follow this convergence that swings south and then back out to sea. The clouds are in no position to argue. Down under. We will still have strong rainstorms and flood potential around the west and the north, but my top alert tonight goes to that convergence. It's a strong one and will be something to watch overnight and into tomorrow as it moves. If you missed Fly on the Wall yesterday, it was very interesting. And then Dr. Uyen came on again, which always takes us over the edge into awesome. The link is below along with our coronal hole quake watch explanations. We've got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.